Hi, I'm Bob, and welcome to Between the Sheets, where we look at Microsoft Excel and related technologies. Pivot tables in Excel are great, and they're a useful tool for data analysis. What makes them even better is the ability to base pivot tables on more than one source table. And they can be in the same workbook, or they can be in separate workbooks. Just keep in mind that as of this recording, this is something you can do only in the Windows edition of Excel and not in the Mac edition. So let's take a look and see how it works. To make the navigation and logistics less cluttered for this video, I have the four tables I'm going to use all in the same workbook. You can see there's four worksheet tabs down on bottom. Let's take a look at the sheets. This first one is all of the sales reps that we have, and each one has a unique employee ID number. There's the person's name and there's the region they're in. Notice the name of the worksheet is sales reps, but when I go to the table design tab, I see the table name is salespeople. So the table name doesn't have to be the same as the sheet name. I've purposely given a few of the tables names that are different from the worksheet just so we can see the difference. Let's go to the next one. This is product. So the sheet name is called products. The name of the table is also called products. We've got the name of the product. We've got what the code is, and then we have the cost and the retail price. Third sheet, the sheet name is customer list, the name of the table is customers, and also we've got the name of the customer, the name of the place that's buying it, and a unique customer ID for each of them. And finally, on the order sheet, we have the order list table. And this is where it all comes together. So we can see there's the employee ID for each order, is the employee ID, customer ID, product code, quantity, and the sell price and the total sales. One problem here is this is difficult to understand. We see a lot of codes, but we have no idea who are the salespeople, who are the products, who are the customers. A pivot table can expose the actual names of everything, so we can read it all in plain English. So let's start out by creating a pivot table. I'm already on the orders tab, the order list table. In the table design tab of the ribbon bar, I'm going to click over there where it says Summarize with Pivot Table. And it says, OK, yeah, you're on the order list table. You want to make a pivot table from that? Great. Do you want to put it on a new worksheet? Always the best idea. And here's the important part down on bottom. It says Add this to the data model. And this is something that you will see in the Windows edition. You will not see this option in the Mac edition. Very important that you check that. Otherwise, the whole thing isn't going to work. So I'm going to do that. Click OK and it gives me the stub of a new empty pivot table. And now I'm looking over here at the field list and I can see, okay, there's all the fields from the order list because that's the table that I was just in. But hey, when I scroll it, you notice that I don't have any of the fields of the other three tables. Here's something that comes in when you create a pivot table based on multiple source tables is this little tab area here. So this is just showing me the active table, but I want to go to all, and this shows me all of the tables. And now I see the field lists of all of the component tables. So I'm going to create a pivot table of customers. So I'm going to twirl open the arrow there for the customers table, and I'm going to take customer name. I'm going to drag that down in rows, close that up again, and now I'm going to go there into orders list and scroll down. There is the total sales, so we know how much we made from each customer. And we've got an error. Look at this, attack of the clones. And why is that happening? Notice on the right, we've got this little yellow warning. Now you may or may not see this error on your machine. It kind of depends on which little version of Excel, and I've sometimes seen this happen, sometimes not. The reason we get this is Excel is not sure how the order list table relates to the customer's table. So what Excel is telling us is it can try to guess what the relationships are that it needs to have to make this work right. 
And what's going to happen is it's going to guess. It'll probably guess correctly, but then we have to go and manually create two more relationships. So I'm going to click auto detect. And you see, it says, okay, there's one new relationship created. Well, we're going to need three of them because we have the orders table and the orders or the order list table has to relate not just to customers, but also to products and to sales reps. That's what we're going to do manually. So you, we could click manage relationships. I'm going to click close and notice that, hey, it did it correctly. And we know that because we have all different numbers there and it's not all the same number repeated over and over. But before we create another new pivot table or expand this one, let's go and create the relationships we need. So still on the pivot table analyze tab of the ribbon bar, I want to click relationships. And that brings up this little table here. So say, okay, there is the order list table that has a field called customer ID, and that is related to the customers table that also has a field called customer ID. Now, if we need to edit this, or maybe Excel guessed wrong, and that happens occasionally, we can just double click it, and that brings up the details. And this is where we can choose which tables we're dealing with and which are the, ta and which are the fields in the tables we're dealing with. I'm going to cancel out and create the other two manually. So in the upper right corner, I'm going to click New. So I'm going to say, OK, let's go again into the order list table. Let's relate that to, let's say, the products table. So there is in the orders table a field called product code, and that relates to the field called product code in the products table. Now, there is nothing that says that the names of these two fields, of these two columns, have to be the same. One could be called product code, and maybe the other is called product ID. That doesn't matter. What matters is that the data in them are the same. So I'm going to click OK. And now let's do one for employees. I'm going to click New, Employees or Sales Reps. So a new one from Orders List to Salespeople. And there is a column called Employee ID. And salespeople here has a column called employee number. So these are two different names, but the content in those columns are the same. So I'm going to click OK. There we go. Anytime we need to edit one of them, we can double click. If we want to remove one, we can just select it and delete, or you could temporarily deactivate it. But we're done here, so I'm going to close. And let's create another pivot table. So this one, that's sheet one, I'm going to call this PT1, just so we remember what that is. And I'm going to take that, and I'm going to drag that to the end of the list. Because you see what happens is when we're on the orders table and we create a new pivot table, Excel puts the new sheet to the left of that current worksheet. So a little bit of an annoyance, but we can juggle that around. So let's create another pivot table. I'm going to go to the table design tab, and there's the orders list table. Click summarize with pivot table. And again, same thing. We're basing it on the order list table. We're going to put it on a new worksheet that's going to go to the left there. And we need to add that to the data model. Click OK and have to remember to click all so that we can see all of the fields. So the last one was for customers. Let's see what the employees are doing. So I'm going to go over to open salespeople. I'm going to take sales rep and drag sales rep into rows. Close that up. Let's go back and open up order list. There is total sales. I'm going to drag total sales into the sum values. So this is good. It doesn't ask me to create a relationship because that's all correct. And let's add a little bit to this. So I'm going to go up here. I'm going to close order list. And I want to know not just 
how much they've sold, but what have they sold? So there is the products field list. I'm going to open that up. And you see there is the product name. And I'm going to take product name, and I'm going to drag that into columns. So now I can see who are the people, who are the sales reps, how much have they sold, and of what product, what coffee variety have they sold. Let's kick this up one more little notch. What if we want to filter by customer? So let's go up there. I'm going to close products. I'm going to open up customers. There's customer name. I'm going to drag that into filters. And so this is all customers. And now I can click that down arrow, expand all, select multiple items. And now I can look at all of the customers or maybe some of them. So maybe let me close that up. I'll deselect that and I will select maybe three random ones, click OK, and now that's just those three random ones. And you see that's multiple items, just like in a regular pivot table. Or let's say I want to look at only one of them. I want to look at maybe Martins. Let me close those others, deselect, so only Martins is selected. OK, so now I can see the sales reps, what products are they selling, and how much are they selling all to this one particular customer. Now that we have the relationships configured, we can create all the pivot tables we want. We can even add tables later, like for shipping, and have them connected as well. So until next time, my name is Bob, and this has been Between the Sheets.